CTV News at 6 with Joe Perkins. Good evening. Thank you for being here. National Hockey League fans are finally getting their fix. The puck is dropped on a new season and the pulse of the hockey nation is beating tonight faster than it has in months. Angry fans swore they would never return, but the power of professional hockey in this country may be too much to handle. Hockey is crawling back, and so are many fans. A dozen seconds left in the five-on-three. One timer score! And with the first goal of the 2013 season, hockey is back. <laughs> Moments later, north of the border with Canadians coast to coast, spending their day in front of a TV. How's everything going, you guys? Canadian fans get their first treat. Lad, the captain, back to Enstrom. But the one timer scores! <laughs> but the cheers on Vancouver Island may have come a little earlier. Back in LA before puck drop. Port McNeil's pride and joy raises the cup one last time. Today it's back up for grabs. It's exciting. <laughs> it's hockey again. It's time to dust off the trophy and fire up the hockey pool, another league jeopardized by the lockout. We had some members in my pool here that were going to boycott the pool. Just this year, just to show a little bit of support against what happened. Well, those people are here. By early afternoon, bars are louder than they've been in months. Full bar in the middle of the afternoon on a Saturday, so it's not to be excited about. Most people here are waiting for the Vancouver Canucks, who this morning took to the ice in preparation for tonight's 7 o'clock home opener against Anaheim. If early indications are anything, it seems most fans are willing to forget that 113 day, what was it called? We put out of our mind the L word. You know, everybody's uh, here, everybody's going to watch. Uh, they, you know, they don't like to like to admit it, but it's, it's hockey. We grew up with this, right? So you got to watch it. So find your seat and get your picks in, because the fight for Lord Stanley's Cup is back. And Canadians could not be more excited. If you're planning to go out to watch the Canucks game tonight, better leave now. More than 150 hockey teams are in Victoria. A lot of players uh, for the 36th annual Carha Pacific Cup which got on its way this morning. The tournament is the largest of its kind in the country. If you think you're happy for the return of the NHL, well, you're not alone. Can't wait. Can't wait. We're staying the extra night here because uh, tomorrow night to watch both games, tonight and tomorrow. Can't wait to watch the games. It's all about hockey. Plus, I'd rather interview with you than go out in the ice. So. <laughs> At least he's honest. If tonight's Canucks game doesn't fill that missing hockey void, don't worry. Tomorrow you can go to any rink in Greater Victoria and chances are you'll catch a game. Again, if you're heading out tonight, expect larger than normal crowds with the influx of hockey players coming in for the tournament from across North America. The community of Camel River is used to stepping up when one of their own is in need, and that's the case once again tonight. This time it's for an eight-month-old whose family desperately needs to get him to Boston for some life-saving medicine. CTV's Gord Kerbis has a story now of a youngster who's already suffered through more medical problems in a short time than most people experience in a lifetime. Oh, you want this one? The hot dogs are cooking and the deal is enticing. A dog and a drink for just two dollars. It's a great deal that's also going a long way to helping send eight-month-old Corey Reese to Boston. It's just been amazing. You can really see the community come together, you know. Like, as soon as they know that there's something wrong with a little child, everybody's willing and wanting to help out as best as they can, whether it's with their time, with their resources, or with their money. Chantel Reese is organizing today's fundraiser, one of a series of events being held to assist with sending her nephew and his family to the Children's Hospital in Boston. That's where an experimental drug will be injected into the infant to treat pulmonary vein stenosis. It's a condition where the blood vessels that bring blood from the lungs to the heart are blocked. When he was first diagnosed, the doctor gave him a couple weeks to a few months to live. Um, He's been fine so far for about a month and a half now, um, but he doesn't have a whole lot of time, so it's big urgency that as soon as they find out when they're accepted to Boston, they're just going to go. Corey and his twin brother were born on May 14th. Carter is the picture of health, but Corey has suffered from a number of problems. The two main arteries in his heart were reversed. When he was just a month old, he underwent surgery to correct that and he's seen more problems in less than a year than most experience in a lifetime. It's, it's horrible. He's been in surgeries probably three times now for different problems. Um, thankfully, this 
new operation that he's doing is just going to be a drug, so he's not actually going to be under the knife or anything. Camp Riverites are used to helping others in time of need. Most are giving donations far beyond the $2 asking price. It's a good cause. The, the child needs to, he needs to, he needs the money, that's for sure. Yeah, kind of, it was kind of felt better to have the hot dog after I knew what it was about. <laughs> They're also thinking of how their lives would be changed if their youngsters suffered like Corey. Because I know if it was her, it would break my heart. So I feel bad for the parents and it's just a good cause. That's why we're down here. Financial contributions to the Reese family are also being gratefully accepted through the local TD Bank. For more information, you can check out the Facebook page entitled Bring Baby Corey to Boston. Ward Curvis, CTV News, Campbell River. Back on the South Island, Victoria police are looking for information into an early morning car theft that didn't end so well. Saanich police responded to an incident at Fowl Bay in Haltain around 4 o'clock this morning. A car believed to be stolen had crashed into a tree. Both air pegs in the car were deployed, leaving police to believe more than one person was involved. When police arrived, both suspects had fled. Anyone with any information is asked to call Victoria police. Victoria firefighters were also busy this morning responding to a house fire on the 700 block of Wilson Street around 2 o'clock. The fire started in a planter at the back of the house and spread up the siding into the exterior walls, the porch roof and eventually into the attic. Four adults in the house had escaped unharmed and were containing the fire using a garden hose and buckets of water prior to the fire department's arrival. It's believed the fire started from the butt of a cigarette. Overall damage to the house has been pegged at $20,000. If you were near Beacon Hill Park today, you may have noticed police tape. Victoria police are investigating a death in the park. Traffic entering the park was blocked this afternoon. At this point in time, police do not suspect any foul play. A young woman was rescued by a police marine unit after she fell into the water off the tip of the Ogden Point breakwater early this morning. Several young adults were on the breakwater around three when one woman fell from the edge, eventually falling into the water. The woman was taken to hospital. The Greater Victoria Harbor Authority is planning to install handrails along the 700 meter historic landmark to meet insurance requirements. That should happen sometime early this year. One of the biggest pieces of Japanese tsunami debris to make it to BC has washed ashore in Haida Gwaii. Well, how would you like to go for a walk on the beach and run into this? It appears to be a silo. Japanese characters on the side indicate it came from a Tokyo-based cement supplier. It washed up on the shores of Haida Gwaii on New Year's Day. People who live in the area are worried about how much more debris will eventually wash up on their shores. And who will be responsible to clean it all up? I think it's actually going to be quite the job. Like, I think we'll probably see a little more here in the summer again. We had a a big dump of it and then it, it cooled up with the season change here and the tides and everything, it'll it'll bring a lot more in again. The biggest concern is like who's who's gonna clean it up? Like what are we gonna do with all the stuff? Because that's gonna be a lot of a lot of garbage. The silo has been towed to the fisheries office in Massett. Protesters were back at Kitsilano's Coast Guard station today in Vancouver, rallying against Ottawa's plan to shut the station down. The station is due to close this spring as a cost-cutting measure. It will be replaced by a three-person rescue team, but Premier Christy Clark, who is on hand today, says that is not enough. She says the move will put people's lives at risk, especially boaters. The station, which is located in Clark's Vancouver riding, responded to more than 250 calls last year. Teachers in Saanich took their work from the kitchen table out into the public to send a message to the province today that their workload goes far beyond the ring of the final school bell. Several teachers were marking papers at the Broadmead Starbucks this morning. The BC Teachers Federation says this year it wants to show the general public that teachers spend a great deal of time working outside of school hours, and that often includes marking papers. Often is the perception in the public is teachers have it really easy, you know, they have a lot of holiday time, they only work from 8.30 till 3. Um, of course, a lot of the public doesn't realize we spend hours um, outside of instructional time uh, in meetings, doing marking, doing prep. Today's showing is also against the Provincial Skills Assessment, or FSA, tests. The teachers believe in an authentic assessment takes much more than one single test. Today's mark-in was a province-wide effort. The city of Victoria is rolling out its new garbage bins, including the new kitchen catchers for your kitchen scraps. 
If you live in Victoria and you're on the city's garbage only program, your new green and gray bins should arrive this week. Everyone will receive a standard 120 liter green bin as well as a gray bin that varies in size and a small kitchen catcher for scraps. If it's all a little much, don't uh, worry. The city will also be dropping off how-to guides with the new collection schedule. Uh, the standardized bins, we have new natural gas um, trucks that will be picking up both kitchen scraps and garbage. And so the, these bins fit with the new trucks and they can be lifted by the trucks and so it will reduce worker injury and allow people to separate their kitchen scraps and garbage. Beginning in early February, kitchen scraps and garbage will be collected from backyards every two weeks. Information stations like the one today will be set up at local grocery stores until the end of the month. For more information, you can watch in how-to video online at victoria.ca slash green bin. Well, if you were feeling a little bit down today, maybe you needed a hug or some kind of pick-me-up. Well, look no further than outside the B.C. legislature. Free hugs, which our CTV News cameraman Steve Coulterman took advantage of. Nice work, Steve. In the past couple of months, happiness ambassadors have popped up across the U.S. and now they're moving into Canada with a stop today in Victoria. They call themselves happiness sprinklers and their goal is to bring happiness to the world when they say it's needed most. Well, there are a lot of unhappiness happening, a lot of people with depressions and a lot of uh, misery out there. And I think this can help people just to be happy on a personal level and, uh, you know, one beat at a time, maybe we can change this world for better. The sprinkling is scheduled to continue on the mainland and eventually continue across the country. If you'd like more information into the movement, you can go to anacorteszenterforhappiness.org.